In this video, I'm going to be going over what, in my opinion, is the best way to manage user input or like use the like controls. In my game Cluster Factory, I opted to go with the technique of placing controller sensors everywhere. And while this is very neat and kind of intuitive, it's it runs into a couple of issues. Mainly if you ever need to change controls, if you ever need to change anything, it is it can get very annoying to just find every little place where you use that control. So what I'm suggesting is to use a technique where the controls are centralized. If we go into my Acer's Helpful Logic uh, collection, you'll see a gadget called Controller Sensor Output. Now, this by itself is very, very simple. It is just a controller sensor with every control hooked into a node. That's all it is. That is all it is. But used in conjunction with a technique I used most recently in Predators vs. Produce, where you have a single controller, I'm sorry, a single microchip that handles controls. You see that chip? This is the chip. And I am using variables to transmit um, whether or not the buttons have been pressed. Now, the reason this works so well is that there is, well, first it's very organized, right? You can, you can easily access all of your controls using variable getters, variable modifiers set to get. And another reason this is cool is because the transmission using variables has no delay. Why would you even want to do this? The best, the, the primary reason is organization. If all of your controls are handled in one place, it's extremely easy to change them. Like up D-pad, down D-pad, it's, it's, right, it's right here. But actually, um, I've done something else. There, there's, there's a better way to do this. Instead of, instead of hooking variables up, like let's say to right D-pad and naming it right D-pad, what I would recommend to do is what I'm doing in my most recent project. I've been thinking about this a lot. I've I've done like a different-ish system every single time at every single project I've done. And I think I've found um, the ideal way and it's, and it's this. So instead of hooking uh, like up D-pad, down D-pad, et cetera, up to variables that are named that, you would hook it up to what to, to things that happen in your game. So for example, in, in Santa Dash 2, you can dash left, right, up, and down. And this is, right now, it's only using the D-pad. I have variables for dashing left, right, up, and down. And all I do is put the up D-pad into dash up, down D-pad into dash down, etc. And why this is good is that let's say I want to also make the left bumper move left, for example. All I need to do is take the left bumper and put it into this, C dash left, which is, con which is continuously setting the dash left variable. So when I press, um, when I press the left bumper, you see how it turns to one. Uh, and also when I press the left D-pad, but that'll undo, so we gotta be careful. This method allows me to easily do that. I don't have to go and dig into the logic and figure out exactly where I have, um, well, this, right, where I'm dashing left, and then like adding the second control here. All I have to do is go into my controller chip and just wire it in. Left bumper into left dash. That's, it's that simple. It's also very easy if you want to give the user a way to change the controls. 
maybe you want to have different control layouts that you can choose in the settings, you manage that all right here. You don't have to go into your logic that's already made. This method, I highly recommend doing this for every one of your projects. There's one caveat, and that is what if you want to transmit fat wires? If you want to transmit the joystick values, uh, you can't do that through variables. Not easily, that is. I would recommend just using uh, transmitters and receivers because if you didn't know, they can transmit and receive fat wires, whereas variables are only a single float. There will be a frame delay. With variables, there is no frame delay with transmitters and receivers, as well as tags and zones, there is a frame delay. One more time, how do you find this gadget? If you search controller sensor output, um, you should find it. And also if you search Acerts helpful logic gadgets, that's probably the most consistent way. Let's see what happens though, if we, sense, if we search controller sensor output. Um, oh, in the Dreamiverse. Yeah, so it's the first thing that comes up. Just grab that and then don't name the variables the actual button. Name the variables what the action is. So like dashing left, da dashing up, down, left, right, some something like that. Again, th the reason being is so that in the future you can add things or remove things or change it and it would still make sense. But yeah, guys, that's it. That's the video. Use this technique. It will make your logic endeavors much smoother, specifically related to controls and button presses. If you need additional dreams help, I have a Discord channel. A, the link, invite link is in the description where you can ask to your heart's content and someone will help you. You can ask any dreams related questions at all. And, um, someone will get back to you and help you out with that. I also stream dreams on Twitch every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, which is another great place to, well, you can pick up things like while I'm building, you can learn stuff or you can just ask any questions you have and I'll answer it live. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day. I just want to be with you. I just want to be